Everything is coincidence. But even coincidence is part of fate's design. I'm not losing it. I'm perfectly sane. What I speak now is the absolute truth. Not some childish fantasy. No matter how trivial something may seem, it has the potential to shape the future. Have you heard of the butterfly effect? If not, look it up. Then you'll understand how careful you must be. Unfortunately, I didn't understand. If only I'd realized how dangerous my actions were, then I wouldn't have lost her. The future wouldn't have turned out like this. But how could I have known? How could I have known that by pressing that button, I would decide the fate of all mankind? Just think about it. Every human perceives just 1% of his environment. We're not nearly as clever as we like to think. We go about our lives oblivious to a million different things that happen around us every day. Even when something catches our eye, our brain forgets it a moment later. I want to tell the me back then, don't do anything careless. Don't do anything rash. Don't pretend you didn't see that. Pay more attention. The hand of conspiracy was always closer than you thought. Just waiting for the right moment to strike. The universe has a beginning, but it has no end. Infinite. Stars too have a beginning, but are by their own power destroyed. Finite. History teaches that those who hold wisdom are often the most foolish. The fish in the sea know not the land. If they too hold wisdom, they too will be destroyed. It is more ridiculous for man to exceed light speed than for fish to live ashore. This may also be called God's final warning to those who rebel. Hey, what are you mumbling about? There's no sound from the phone against my right ear. Only silence. I am baking in the summer sun. A bead of sweat slowly slides down my chin and drips onto the concrete. Ocarine! Earth to Ocarine! Are you talking to someone? I nod and put the phone back to my ear. Still no sound from the other side. My contact is wise to maintain silence. The whole area could be bugged. Yeah. No, I was just talking to someone. Everything's fine. I'm about to infiltrate the assembly hall. Yeah, Dr. Nakabachi got the jump on us, but I'll make sure he tells us everything. What? The organization is already on the move? I see. So that's the choice of Stein's Gate. L. Sai. Kongru. Stein's Gate. Some know it as fate. To others, it is the will of God. You could count on one hand the people in this world aware of its true nature. In any case, we should begin the infiltration. I advance towards Radikan, which is just across the street from the train station. Of course, this is enemy territory. I can't just stride through the front door like an average person. I bypass the elevators and escalators and head to the 8th floor by the stairwell. At long last, 
I make it to the 8th floor. Honestly, I didn't think it would be so brutal. Who was that on the phone? The girl, Sheena Mayori, immediately resumes our conversation. She followed me all the way up here, and she isn't even short of breath. If I told you, I'd have to kill you. Oh, wow. Thanks, Okarin. Mayori is 16, two years younger than me. So she's more like a little sister than a typical childhood friend. I've been looking out for her as long as I can remember. I used to hope that Mayori might become the key to Stein's Gate, but now I've reconsidered. I don't want that terrible fate for her, she should live a normal life. That is my present wish. Once inside, we're greeted by a sign reading, Dr. Nakabachi's Time Machine Press Conference. Ocarin? Ocarin! Mayuri insists on calling me Ocarin, but it's neither my real name nor my code name. It's just one of those annoying nicknames people use. How many times do I have to tell you? Don't call me Ocarin. Huh? But I've always called you that. That was then. I have since become Owen Kyoma. The insane mad scientist hunted by secret organizations the world over. <laughs> but that's too hard to remember. In any case, Hoin Kyoma is my true name. And besides, it doesn't even sound like Akabe Rintaro. Akabe Rintaro may be my real name, but I have rejected it. But it is stupid. And so I also hate the derivative. Ocarin. So Ocarin, can I ask you something? In one ear and out the other. What are we doing here? Wait, you followed me here without knowing why? Yep. We're here for Dr. Nakabachi's press conference. We're standing in the assembly hall on the 8th floor of Radikan. It is here that the conference will be held. Press conference? But where are the reporters? Mayori's right. Considering Nakabachi's notoriety and the topic at hand, I was expecting a larger audience. Could this be the organization working its twisted influence? I thought that Nakabachi was like me, a scientist fighting to overthrow the organization. But this press conference suggests other motives at work. Our enemies won't miss this chance. I'd prefer not to get wrapped up in his mess. Nevertheless, I'm interested in what he has to say. You wrapped something? Is it his birthday too here? Keep your guard up, Mayori. I suspect this won't be a normal con. I didn't even finish my sentence. Are we under attack? Are they trying to fry our brains with electromagnetic waves? We're definitely under attack. It's coming from above us. But we're on the top floor. All that's above us is the roof. An earthquake? Is it magnitude 2? What does magnitude mean again? No time to deal with Mayuri's confusion. Something's not right about this. Feeling uneasy, I bolt out of the conference hall. I run up the stairs to the roof, ignoring the no trespassing signs in my way. What the? A strange machine is sitting in the middle of the roof. It's huge, maybe three meters tall, and looks kind of like a satellite. Who put it here? Was it Dr. Nakabachi? Is this part of his presentation? Impossible. And if that were the case, how the hell would he get it up here? This is the rooftop of an eight story building for crying out loud. Please stay back everybody. The press conference will proceed as scheduled. 
she trying to hide something? Her response was unusually quick. Almost like she's trying to keep me away from that device. I've got a nose for conspiracies, and this stinks of a cover-up. What are they trying to hide? I didn't realise it in the heat of the moment, but the lock on the rooftop door was broken. Is this a result of a mere prank? Or could it be the organisation at work? Though the stench of conspiracy burns at my nostrils, I resignedly return to the eighth floor. Mayuri is nowhere to be seen. She's not in the event hall either. I find her on the seventh floor. Several capsule toy machines are lined up near the seventh floor entrance. She's gazing upon them with a wistful look. Mayuri. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Hmm? Well, I really want an Upa. Mayuri points to a capsule machine reading Rhinet Access Battlers Upa Collection. Nowadays, it's hard to find anyone unfamiliar with Rhinet Kakuru. Rhinet Kakuru is a popular anime series with its own card game spin off, Rhinet Access Battlers. They even hold international tournaments. Upa is the series' mascot character. It resembles an elliptical egg with limbs sticking out, like some kind of deformed dog. And by all means, go ahead. But Mayushi is all out of 100 yen coins. Mayushi is what Mayuri calls herself sometimes. According to her, it's supposed to have a star at the end. Mayushi star! So... Can I borrow a hundred yen? Please? Do you think it's that easy, Mayori? You'll get no money from me. Instead, I'll show you how harsh life really is. I pull out a 100 yen coin and drop it in the machine's coin slot. Ah! Ah! I open the capsule and take out the contents. It's an Upa! And it's metal! A metal Upa! Is it rare? Super rare. Hmm. Hmm. Mary's eyes are sparkling. Does she really want it that badly? Hmm. I give this creature of metal to you, Mayuri. Honestly, I don't want it. Really? Are you sure, Ocarin? The name's Ho in Kyoma! <laughs> Thank you, Ocarin. <clears throat> she doing it on purpose? Thank you all for coming to Dr. Nakabachi's Time Machine Press Conference. Sounds like they're starting. Let's go, Mayuri. Mm, just a sec, I gotta write my name. She's preoccupied with a metal upa. I go on ahead. Without further ado, I'm pleased to introduce the inventor, Dr. Nakabachi. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. I am Dr. Nakabachi. Thank you all for coming. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to begin with my theory of time travel, the greatest scientific breakthrough of the century. There are about 20 people now, including us. But still no media presence to speak of. So this is the extent of Dr. Nakabachi's fame. No one believes that he invented a time machine. I was interested in what he had to say, true, but my expectations were no higher than the rest of the onlookers. And a good thing they weren't, as he proceeds to explain his time machine design, my curiosity quickly turns to disappointment, then anger. <laughs> Do you take us for fools? 
Who the hell are you? Who the hell am I? Someone who knows you for a fraud, that's who. You stole your theory from John Titer, and you call yourself an inventor? S someone throw this man out. You're the one we should throw out. Don't have you no shame. You have no right to call yourself an inventor. Shut your mouth, you little pest. Just then, someone taps me on the shoulder from behind and suddenly grabs my arm. Is it a staffer? Nay, an agent from the organization. Unhand me, you! Huh? It's a girl about my age. Her face looks somehow familiar. Where have I seen her before? Oh, it's Makase Kurasu. We haven't met, but I know her face. A few days ago, my friend Daru showed me a magazine article titled Girl Genius Gives Lecture in Akihabara. The article was about a 17-year-old girl who had just graduated from an American university. Her thesis was even published in a major scientific journal. What business could this genius girl have with me? Could you come with me for a moment? I don't believe that Makase Kurisu is a staff member at this venue, which means no! You're with the organization? Huh? Stop fooling around and come with me. I decided to shut up and follow suit. My outburst had already attracted too much attention. I let Makase Kurisu lead me out of the assembly hall. Try anything and people are sure to notice. What will your superiors say then? What are you talking about? I just need to ask you something. What makes you think I'll answer? I know how the organization operates. What's with this organization stuff? Instead of answering, I take out my phone and put it to my ear. It's me. Being caught by an organization agent. Yes, it's Makase Kurisu. She's a dangerous one. No, it's fine. I'll find a way to... <laughs> what skill? I didn't have time to react. What are you doing? Huh? Your phone's off. <laughs> Who are you talking to? <laughs> Your techniques don't work on me, but I'll tell you anyway. That's no ordinary phone. It's designed to deactivate the moment it leaves my hand. <laughs> Such measures are necessary to maintain secrecy. I know things that could get me killed. This statement was a mere gambit to get my phone back from Kurisu, but it somehow worked. Oof, I was close. So, so you talk to yourself? <coughs> this is bad. Ordinary methods don't work on Makase Kurisu, the genius girl. On the contrary, she's the one psyching me out. Damn. Looks like I'll have to make a tactical retreat, if I can just find an opening. Just when I think i found my moment, Kurisu's gaze meets mine, locking me in place. Her powerful gaze blazes with the strength of will. Such fire! I can't look away. Could someone with such pure eyes really be an organization agent? What were you trying to tell me earlier? Earlier? What are you talking about? About 15 minutes ago, before the conference started. Nonsense. This is the first time we've met. I was with Mayuri and that Uber toy 15 minutes ago. You were trying to tell me something, right? You looked really upset. Is this a trap? It does seem like one of the organization's dirty tricks. But would this girl do something that underhanded? You look like you're gonna start crying any second. 
Why? Have we met before? She seems sincere. That makes her even more suspicious. And how do you know my name? My knowledge has no limits. I'm a mad scientist after all. Genius girl, our next meeting shall be as enemies. Huh? Farewell. <laughs> I ran down the stairs and quickly hid in the opposite stairway. I hear Makase Kurosu's voice echoing after me, calling for me to stop. I'm like I'd listen to the enemy. Damn the organization. They must be serious if they're sending in agents like her. But I can't let them capture me yet. My mission was to attend the conference and evaluate Dr. Nakabachi's research. Now that I know he's a fraud, there's no real point in going back. I guess I'll just go home. But wait, am I forgetting something important? I was trying to prioritize that girl's safety, but I got careless. I'll try calling her first. If she's alright, then I can just have her meet me here. With that thought in mind, I take out my phone. I turn it on. And it rings just as I do. Hmm? Hmm? An email? It's not just a regular email. There's a video attached. And it's from an unknown address. I open the video file with some trepidation. Hmm? Hmm? Is it a prank? Or some sort of Makase Kurusu style attack? Maybe the noise is some sort of make people go crazy frequency. No, wait. I don't remember giving her my mail address. So I'm probably thinking too hard. I have more pressing matters to deal with anyway. I stop the video and call Mayuri's phone from my address book. Damn it, Mayuri. Why won't you pick up? At this point, I have no choice but to go search for her. But things will get messy if I bump heads with Makase Kurasu again. Still, leaving without Mayuri isn't an option. Call me overprotective, but she's like a little sister to me, and there's a very real danger that she might wander off somewhere the moment I let her out of my sight. And by somewhere, really do mean anywhere. Mayuri has always been like that. I never know if she'll be there when I turn to look. In a sense, that's why I became Hoin Kyomo. With a sigh, I close my phone and begin my search. Suddenly, I hear footsteps coming up the staircase. Uh, okay. Ocarin! My metal Uka ran away! Ran away? What? It's... alive? That's a little hard to believe. I think I dropped it. I see. So she was looking for it. Jeez, to think I was actually worried about her. Forget about it. You can always get another one. No way! Meta Upas sell upwards of 10,000 yen online, you know? Wait! What? That toy was worth that much? Think, Mayuri. Where did you drop it? I don't know, that's why I'm looking. And even if we find it, you can't sell it, okay? <laughs> that 10,000 yen will fund my research. I said you can't sell it. It even has Mayushi's name on it. Thus begins our search for the metal Upa. Oopa Oopa, come out, come out, wherever you are. Mayuri tries calling its name. I don't know if she truly expects a response. By the way, Tuturu is Mayuri's catchphrase. It means... Actually, I've never bothered to ask what it means. Anyway, the metal Oopa is nowhere to be found. This might mean that she didn't drop it on the 7th floor near the capsule machines, but somewhere on her way to the 8th floor. 
there's also the possibility that it was pilfered by someone who knows just how much a metal looper is worth. What kind of man steals a helpless girl's toy? Is there nothing in his heart but the lust for money? Sounds like you, Ocarin. Whoa, wasn't expecting that from Mayuri. Ah! What was that? Was that a scream? I think so. First the incident on the roof and now this. What's going on here? Stay here, Mayuri. I follow the scream up the stairs and down a dark, empty hallway. I'm pretty sure it came from around that corner. And there, through a conspicuously open door, I see it. There's something on the ground, motionless. I recognized her clothing. What was it? It can't be. <laughs> what? Makase Kurasu. The impertinent genius girl I just fought with 30 minutes ago is now face down in a pool of bright red blood. She's dead. <laughs> no, but why? <laughs> I want to run, run away. I shouldn't have come. This is wrong. There's no other explanation. Someone killed Makase Kurasu. Who would do such a thing? There's no one else here. I need to get out of here. Now. I rush down to the seventh floor to grab Mayuri. What happened, Ocarin? We're leaving. I race down the stairs trying to drive the image of Kurasu's dead body from my mind, but I can't. The redness of her blood is burned into my mind more than the sight of the body itself. Is this what it's like? When I realised that she was dead, I felt chilling terror and a surge of nausea. But that was all I felt. Fear and disgust. Shouldn't there be something more? I guess I just didn't know her that well. Hey, what happened? You look really pale. She looks slow, but she's actually pretty fast on her feet. Someone... died. Huh? I take several deep breaths. The colour of that blood still stains my brain, but I've calmed down a bit. Makase Kurisu is dead. And I don't know who the killer is. Sirens in the distance. I guess an ambulance will be here soon. Then the police will arrive and this area will be a crime scene. But for now, the crowds milling through Akihabara have no idea what has happened. Everyone is going about their business as usual. The never-ending search for electronics, moe and porn. I take my phone out of my pocket, perhaps out of reflex. I'm not sure what I plan to do with it. Oh, I know. My friend Daru. I'll tell him what happened just now, since he knows about Makase Kurosu. Who could stay calm after witnessing something like that? I have no idea who did it. I don't even know for sure that it was a stabbing. I just made the assumption based on the pool of blood on the floor and the fact I didn't hear any gunshots. On the other hand, I didn't write that she was dead, even though I'm pretty sure she was. I can't exactly explain why I didn't. If I had to say, I guess I just felt like writing it down would set it in stone. I finish typing and place my thumb over the send button. And then, with the lightest touch, I press down. 
sending. Oh. What was that? Wait, look around. They're gone. Summer break. 12.54 p.m. Akihabara. Chudori. Three-minute walk from the station. Right there. In an instant, hundreds of pedestrians disappeared. Into thin air. Without a trace. Is this a dream? Am I hallucinating? I don't know. But they're gone. I saw them vanish with my own two eyes. I stood there, alone, in the completely empty Akihabara, speechless and petrified. I look around, but no one is there, not even Mayuri. I start to run through the uncannily empty streets of Akihabara. I don't see anyone. Not so much as a sign of life. I have absolutely no idea what is going on. My mind racing, feel a strange presence above me, then look up. And there, at the top of Radikan, sticking out from the eighth floor where I'd just been, is a crashed satellite.